I think it's about time we dig the C30 out of the woods and finally start working on it. I let this sit here a lot longer than I intended, but winter's coming and we need to get started on this budget build E30 so I can get this thing done and move on to the E28 project. So I'm gonna dig this thing out of the woods and I'll meet you guys back in the driveway. So if you guys remember, it's been a while, I got this E30 325E a couple months ago before I left for my trip. And the plan for this is a budget build E30, basically getting an E30 non-running and making it look a little bit better, making it run good so that it's ready to hit the road for uh, you know someone who wants a simple daily driver. This isn't gonna be a motor swap, you know, horsepower, lowered wheels type of build. This is gonna be a basically getting a, a pretty rough E30 and seeing how nice we can make it so that uh, you know you guys can follow along and do this for yourself and get yourself a nice little budget E30. So I think it's got good bones, it just needs a little bit of love. So this is the first episode of the budget build E30. So in this episode what we're gonna be doing is getting this thing running again because until we do anything else and making it look nice, it has to run. So to start, if you guys remember, it cranked strong but no start. So we're gonna uh, look for spark, look for fuel, see if we can pinpoint what it's not getting. It, I believe it has compression because it sounds pretty good. And then once it gets running, hopefully it gets running, probably in this video, we're gonna hammer out the brake line that needs to be replaced. If you remember when I pulled off the trailer, the brake line burst. So this episode, the plan is to get it running and driving. Now, running and driving well will be the next episode. This is just baseline, get the thing operational again. So without further ado, let's first off make sure we still have a crank, and then I think we're gonna pull the plugs and check for spark. All right, we still have to crank, so that's good. So I'm gonna pull one of the wires off, put a spark plug in it, and see if we have spark. So basically how we're gonna do this is all we gotta do is pull out one of the plug wires, take a spark plug. I don't really feel like pulling the plugs out of this thing. So take a spark plug, and you want it up against the metal valve cover so that it has a grounding point. And then basically it's gonna be hard to see because it's daytime, we're gonna crank it, and you should see a spark in that electrode. I'm gonna set you guys up so that you guys can see, and then I'll have to watch back this footage to find out. I don't know how easy you guys can see it on the camera, but that is spark. So this thing has spark, and basically what that does for us is that eliminates the uh, crank sensor. So these M20s have the reference sensors for the crankshaft. Without a crankshaft sensor, at least in those, and I believe these follow the same kind of guidance, without a signal from that, you don't get fuel, you don't get spark. So we have compression, we have spark. That means the problem lies within the fueling system, which is fun because that's... Uh, a little more involved, not not too bad. Uh, I could swear we had a fuse box cover there with the diagram, I guess not. So I'm gonna have to look that up, figure out which one of those is the fuel pump fuse and if there's a relay or not, then the next step is to jump the relay and see if we could hear power at the fuel pump. And uh, otherwise we're gonna have to jack up the car, get under there, and I believe the fuel pump is under the, like by the wheel well on that side. Then we're gonna have to take a look at that fuel pump really fast and maybe it's as much as a fuel pump. Kind of smells like fuel though, so it's, I don't know. But at least now we know our distributor cap, our rotor, our wires, and our coil are all functioning because we have spark and our crank sensor. That eliminates a lot of stuff, which is really nice. Wait, 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 wait. You guys aren't gonna believe this. So, I just went to film a TikTok of basically what I'm doing for YouTube, but a quicker TikTok. So I went to go show them cra uh, spark. And listen to this. The freaking thing runs! How the hell is that possible? I guess this video is gonna be a lot quicker than I thought. I don't know why, I mean, I gave it a few cranks and nothing. I guess a, all it needed was a, a few more cranks, and uh, whatever it was that wasn't starting it came back to life, so that's not bad. But now we gotta check some things. The intake boot's not even on there. Check the filters, check the fluids before we run it any longer, see if it's leaking anything. And then um, we could probably go take it for a spin and post some of the lack of brake lines. Isn't that amazing that a car can sit for half a decade and all it needs is a few cranks to get going? These BMWs, man, I'm telling you, these things are so crazy. How how just durable these cars are. It's it's honestly insane. 
Okay, so we're going to take this air box out and check the filter because after my old E12, uh, I learned that animals like to put things uh, or make nests in these filters. And you do not want that. That will cause a lot of running issues. So I'm going to take it off now. Ripped, so I'm gonna have to figure that out because that's not gonna want to run. We have ripped ICV hose, gonna have to get one of those. A straw, look at that, a straw. We have no power steering belt, weird. The fan shroud or the alternator or the fan shroud itself is on the power steering, that's gonna have to be figured out. All right, well, there's a few things in here, but nothing out of the ordinary. The filter's not bad at all. Is there a date on here? No date, but this will probably be replaced anyway, but it's the least of our worries right now. I'm gonna look for an intake boot, and then we'll shove this all back together real quick. The classic vintage BMW owner thing where you electrical tape your intake boot because you don't want to spend $15 on a new one until I can get a new one so I'm obviously gonna make a list of parts I'm gonna have to order after this but uh damn man this is looks like this video is gonna be easier than I thought I thought it was gonna be some fun troubleshooting freaking thing runs we have to save a few things to iron out but I'm gonna put all this back in place run it for a little bit oh, I'll check the oil and then uh, I'm gonna have to get some brake line do that brake line and then I think we could probably just go drive this thing uh, eventually I'll change the oil and stuff. Alright, let's, let's check the oil on this old thing. Smells fine, looks a little dark. But it looks like we have some, which is good. Oh yeah, right in the middle. Alright, so we're perfect, so I think we're just good to go ahead and run this. Run it, I'm going to get up to temp, see if it uh, overheats. Well, I guess I should plug these back in, huh? Crap <laughs> uh, to plug this hose back in. Wow, what do you know? It actually sounds pretty good. It sounds like an M20. Oh, 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 oh. Sounds like it might have a bit of an exhaust leak, but nothing major. This thing hasn't been ran in like five years. It, it, it's running pretty nice. I'm kind of amazed that this just fired up, to be honest. Coolant's low, washer fluid's low. Um, Brake lights on because we have a hole in the brake line. What in the hell is that noise? Something's making an interesting noise. Fuel gauge works. We have a half a tank. Temp gauge. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say it's not working, but it may have came back to life. So I'm interested to see if that temp gauge actually moves and starts to work. RPMs, I don't know if that gauge is off or if it's just idling high. But I'm hearing a noise. What is this noise? Oh no, I just closed the door on myself. There's no door handle. Ugh. Dang, I'm locked in here. Does the window work? Oh yeah, all right, I'll let myself out this way. Jesus. Well, she's holding temp just perfectly. It definitely, the idle is high. I don't know if that's a vacuum leak causing that or if the throttle is just adjusted improperly. So I'm gonna have to look into that. But like otherwise, this thing runs really good. Like really good. So I'm gonna go grab some brake line and let's just get right into it and replace this brake line really quick because I wanna take this thing for a spin. So we're underneath the E30 and the hard line that runs from the front all the way to the rear is leaking right here by this bracket. So obviously uh, moisture and rust is able to build up really easily because there's a bracket covering it. So that's where we're leaking from. And of course, 
BMW doesn't make it easy. That line goes all the way up into the, uh, I believe, the master. And it runs all the way down the car. All the way up over the subframe into this union right there. And that does not look good, does it? <laughs> that looks rustier than hell. This is when these Midwest cars start to really, you know, become a pain in your ass because holy hell, I don't know what to do about that. That line is huge and it runs and there's a lot of curves and uh, it runs the whole car. And that's gonna make that very hard to uh, replace. All right, so here's our game plan. And since I said this is a budget build, I'm gonna use that excuse to uh, not go through the process of replacing an entire brake line. I got out of the car and like I said, I don't know if those fittings are going to come undone. So basically what I'm going to do is just patch the part of the line that needs to be patched or repaired. So I have all these old copper lines that I tried to make for my E12 back in the day. And I have them basically just sitting here. So my game plan is I'm going to cut out the portion of line that has the hole in it underneath the car. And then I'm going to reflare both those ends and use this piece right here cut to whatever length I need and then flare this and use these, uh, what are these called, unions. So this is not like the best way to fix a brake line, but this is the way that a lot of people will do with cars that are super rusty because it is not easy. Getting to the fittings, first off, they're just hard to access. Second off, they're so rusted, I don't know if it would even work. So to avoid that frustration, I'm gonna make myself even more frustrated trying to like DIY a bunch of flares. And flaring brake lines is something that I'm not really good at and never really knew how to do. All right, so we're underneath here. The line's leaking here, I believe. I'm actually gonna double check that before I mess this up. Okay, good. All right, so the line's got a little bit of movement, which is good. Oh yeah, it's just destroyed. All right, let me just triple check that this is it. This will help get fluid out too. Yeah, 100%. So I got the line cut off with the little pipe cutter right there. So that's the part we are cutting away. Looks like I will have enough room here. I cut it as short as I could. So this is where it was really leaking and it's actually like completely sheared. Um, and then I believe it was seeping there. So as I said, usually there's you know, one weak point that will go first and then the rest of the line is compromised and then the next weakest spot will break. So that way, I hopefully I eliminate the two weakest spots. We want this in there and we want it protruding to the height of the shoulder of the anvil, which is about like this. Tighten this down nice and square. Now, we get the anvil, get the press. God, this sucks under the car. I hate this. Shove that in there. Now undo it. And then we pull the anvil out and we just go straight with the, the tool here. Hey guys, look, I made the flare. But guess what I forgot to do? Put the goddamn fitting on it. So that was pointless. Now I have to cut it. And now I've wasted more line. I'm right at a bend here. So now I'm already kind of screwing myself. Dude, I hate flaring brake lines. This is such a pain in the ass underneath the car with these old steel. They're so hard. And then I, I screw up like this. And that makes me even more frustrated. I knew I was gonna do something like this, man. I freaking hate brake lines. This is literally enough of a reason for me to not buy a car. But this happened after I bought it, so I'm stuck dealing with it now. So it ain't the prettiest flare, but it's done. That's the union. While I was making the flare for the other side, the line just sheared off. Cause honestly, when you're twisting this flare thing, it puts kind of a lot of stress on the line. And I mean, these lines are just rusty and destroyed. So it broke to, we're at a point where I can't just remake another flare further back. So unfortunately, uh, we have to go to the engine bay and it connects all the way down there. And where it connects is a place that you can't really get a wrench to 
unless you kind of pull out the uh, the brake master booster fuel lines fuel filter so to hell with that we're just gonna go ahead and cut that part out and go straight to the source here so I trace the lines and we have to go to this one right here that comes around the back so basically at this point what I'm just gonna do is replace from the actual um, ABS unit itself and I'm gonna get copper line and just bend it and go all the way to meet that union where I created that so I don't know how many feet that is but uh, that's the plan. So I'm just gonna go to the store, get a bunch of copper line because like I said, copper line, you could just bend really easily. And then we're just gonna go meet that union. So I just had to spend $73 at AutoZone for 25 feet of copper brake line because of my stupid rusty brake lines. What went from a $5 fix is now 75, 76 bucks because you can't buy this stuff in any less than 25 feet. And I want this because it's easiest to bend. So I made the bubble invert, not inverted, the bubble metric flare that goes into the uh, ABS unit. I'm um, using the um, original fitting. I cut it off the other line. So this side's ready to go. I got plenty of line here to route through. Now we're gonna go to the engine bay. We're gonna hook this up to the ABS pump and then route this down to where I was working at earlier. And hopefully it's long enough to reach. I think it should be. So you can see here, I got the copper line through, straightened up into the thing. It's mounted at the ABS pump. I just gotta tighten that. Then I'm gonna go underneath. I gotta shorten it to where I need it. And then we gotta make the flare at the bottom into the union. That's where our union's gonna be. So I gotta shorten it to about there. Check out that beauty right there. Union's done, tight. I got it hooked up to ABS. So it's time to put new fluid in. I'm probably not gonna bleed it tonight, but I'm gonna put fluid in and pump it up, make sure that we don't have any leaks. Oh, the union is leaking. All right, it's another day. Back at it. So, last night, we learned that the union didn't work, it's leaking. And honestly, I should have known with these garbage brass like compression fittings, it literally says on the thing, not for brake line use. So I got a more proper thing here. So I got this solid brass, uh, it's actually a brake line fitting here. These are junk. This is a compression fitting. It said not for use in brake line systems, too much pressure, and we witnessed that. A few moments later. Okay, after multiple reflaring attempts, the, it kept kinking, it kept getting you know, uneven, leaking. I finally think I've managed to get it to hold pressure, and we have moved into the bleeding. I'm by myself, so that means two by four bleeder. I got my little bleeding set up right here. Got some fluid coming out, so I think it may be working. So I'm gonna go around and bleed them all right now. It's really annoying to do it by yourself, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make it happen. So fingers crossed everything holds. So we come in here, push the seat back, pump the brake pedal, and it's getting firm. So I think, yep, I think everything's holding. Pump it up, put the two by four back in place. I would never do this if the seat had mint, or if the car had mint seats, but it doesn't. Now we come back here, crack it. And it's filling up with disgusting old brake fluid. All right, let's see if this thing will start. Oh. Fires right up, and our brake line light went away because we have brakes now. Let's let's test them. Oh yeah, we got brakes. That brake line job was miserable. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. And I probably said it a ton of times in this video. Man, I'd rather sell a car than deal with brake lines. It's such a pain on this. Luckily, I was able to patch it. Took a million attempts. Let's just go ahead and drive it and see how things are. Uh, see how it drives. I just aired up the tires. They're dry rotted to hell. The car's gross inside and out, but uh, it'll be fun. Eating. Now you guys may be like, well, what about the timing belt? This car actually had the timing belt replaced before it was put away. So yes, it's old now, but it's had a timing belt done. So it's not an OG timing belt. So I'm not really worried about that at all. And if we're being honest, I'm not worried about, even if it wasn't replaced, I still wouldn't really care. So like, this isn't a nice car, you know, this is, 
this is something that we're just trying to revive a little bit for someone to have a nice little daily. So let's get on the road and see how this thing drives. This car is in need of some love for sure. It actually drives and like, like, like it pulls pretty good. The brakes, I need to get rid of the rust. I, I, these brakes probably need to be resurfaced or replaced. I might end up doing brakes on this thing if I can't get this rust worn off from sitting. But like, stop's not bad. I think the main issue with this car is just how old and rotten the tires are. I honestly think this car wouldn't feel that bad if the tires were like replaced. Um, like the, the steering's actually pretty, pretty freaking peppy. I don't know if peppy's the right word, but I mean it, not a lot of play and this, it doesn't feel bad at all actually. Um, it's crazy driving, this thing has, probably hasn't seen their own in five years, like it's kind of insane. I would say tires for sure, um, I mean, I, I would almost go as far as to say like just tires in this car would feel pretty good. Um, I don't want to say like, oh it needs control arms and stuff because tires cause a lot of issues so um, I don't know I don't really feel like you know doing control arms and stuff that'll get expensive so the way it feels and how firm it is I think everything's kind of decent shocks maybe but that's not stuff that I'm you know itching to replace in order to sell it you know I'm gonna get it road really so it's reliable and safe meaning you know doing the brakes and stuff and we'll go from there but otherwise and maybe I'll make a video comparing this directly to the 520 AD because these are both like the same car. Uh, this economy motor and this thing feels a lot better than it does in the E28. E28 is a much heavier car. These E30s are like little paperweights. I kind of forgot how much like a paperweight e, a paperweight E30s are because it's been a while since I've owned mine. Just such tiny, light, nimble cars. It's they're so fun. Let's, let's floor it and see what she does. It's obviously still not fast, but man, it, it goes all the way to the red line and it does it pretty good. Dude. I mean, it's slow. That, that's 60 right there. This is a insanely slow car, but uh, not that bad, like in terms of like, a lot of times these M20s will kind of hesitate and stutter when you know things are old and not in good condition these these are very like susceptible to like the, the spark components going bad this thing pulled the red line no no hiccups no anything i don't think like i don't think it needs any of that stuff man you just be like oh it needs a cap or rotor yeah i think i'd be wasting my money doing all that the front definitely has a it has like that 55 hour shake similar to like e34s but i really do feel as if that's the tires uh, I haven't really given it like a formal inspection, so it's hard to say, but I wouldn't be surprised. I don't want you guys to be surprised if I don't do suspension on this just because that gets expensive and not worthwhile. Um, it definitely shakes at 55, 60. So I don't know what that is on E30s. These don't have upper control arms like the front of E34s. These are way different because it's a steering rack. So I, I have to look into that. But drive line wise, not bad. The brakes stop pretty good. So the brake line job is good. And I feel bad because this video, all we did was a freaking brake line job. Like I was supposed to do all these things about getting it running and all this, and it just ran on its own. So it is so crazy. This, this is a car that's been sitting for half a decade, and I have quite literally done a brake line, hopped in, and drove it. Like that's kind of insane how, like, how crazy these cars can just sit like that. I feel like not every car out there in the world can sit for, you know, five years and just start, you know? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do a zero to 60 in this thing. Cause I did it in the E28, and I don't know which video's coming out first, but I wanna compare them. I know the time from the E28 I haven't memorized. So I'm gonna right off the bat tell you which car runs better, or which one's quicker. Here we go. Three, two, one. I'm gonna stop it at 60, stop it at 60. We are matted, we are matted. Red line, woohoo! Oh, come on, come on, come on. 14 seconds. So if you don't remember, I'll pop it up. The E28 was 15.6, I think, or 15, around there. So this car is about 
a second and a half quicker than the E28, which is really cool. Not really cool. It's really slow, but it's a little bit quicker. And it makes sense because it's a little bit lighter. But like I said earlier, this thing's going to red line, no problem. So that is pretty crazy. Yeah, the, the steering on this car, this car shakes bad. I don't know if that's brakes, tires, or control arms. Did I just lose something? Let's see if the brakes are still good. Yep. Yeah, uh, so it definitely needs something. I'll probably, I'll probably, I will probably will do like suspension components, but that'll be another video. This is just initial drive video. Yeah, this thing's not bad. It's, this is a nice little, this car will be a nice little daily. When I'm done with it and I make the interior like livable because mind you, there's a mouse nest in the, in the glove box that actually you guys haven't seen, but there's a mouse nest in the glove box. Uh, once I make it a little bit more livable and clean it, and get all the things kind of tucked away that are uh, you know figured out. I don't doubt that this car will be a very nice little daily driver to go to, to go to a new home. And I'm gonna clean it. We're gonna detail the outside. We're gonna do uh, rust repair, like you know half ass. And I think it'll look pretty decent, and it'll drive pretty decent, and uh, it'll be a nice little car that I, I'll sell for cheap. You know, this car has potential, I think. And uh, yeah, that brake line was brutal, miserable job, but we did it. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of our Budget Build E30. I'm excited to get going on this car. Oh, I don't have a door handle. I forgot about that. But uh, yeah, blue on blue, cool little car. Not, not the greatest, but has potential. So thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.